Hey guys, Charles here. Let's do a 2021 number two FRQ. This is a set two FRQ. Uh, it's an externality question. The copper is produced in a perfectly competitive market with an upward sloping supply curve, downward sloping demand. The production of copper results in liquid waste, which seeps into the local rivers, causing illness and crop failures. This is because it's harmful. Oops. Because it's harmful, this is a negative externality, and it is a production externality. A negative production ex Anytime you've got pollution, right? We know pollution is a production externality. It's negative, so we know we're going to want less of this good, and it's production that implies two supply curves. So we do know how to draw it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and... Two supply curves, those are supposed to be parallel. Then one demand curve, it is price and quantity on the axes, demand, MSB, MPB. Yeah. Uh, I know that it's negative, right? First of all, I know it's negative. That means my dead weight loss triangle is gonna point to the left. It has to be between these two curves, so my dead weight loss triangle has to point to the left. Easy enough. I know that, and that's always true. So I also know my dead weight loss triangle points to my socially optimal quantity, where there is no dead weight loss. That is the quantity that society wants of this good. That is the social optimal quantity. We'll call it QS. They call it the socially efficient quantity. Same thing. Socially optimal, socially efficient. Same thing. I know that these two curves, because there's a dead weight loss in between here, there's my marginal social cost is greater than my marginal personal cost, right? It's negative. Social cost is greater than personal cost. And I can see that. I know where MPC and MPB come together. That's the market, price of the good quantity of the good, which is the second thing we really needed to have there is that QM. We can see that at that quantity that the market produces, dead weight loss is greatest. And as we produce less and less and less of this good, we get to no dead weight loss. All right. Um, this sentence right here, the marginal external cost from producing copper is constant across all quantities of copper produced. What that is implying there is that your marginal social cost and your personal cost are parallel to one another. That the vertical distance between these two curves, that vertical distance right there is what we call our MEC, M-E-C, or marginal external cost. Now, if this was a positive externality, it would be a marginal external benefit, but this is a cost. We know it's harmful. We know we want less of it. We know it's pollution. So that vertical distance is the cost, or what we're going to find out later is that's what we should tax to get uh, less of this good. And that's sort of what's going on here is that we know that any negative production externality, we want to tax it. Uh, when it becomes more expensive, there'll be less of it produced there. All right, so we've got our QM, we got our QS. I think we're golden on that. Suppose the demand for copper decreases on your graph in part A, show the dead weight loss and the new equilibrium shaded completely. All we have to know, and this is tricky, I don't think I've seen one like this before, but the idea here is that the demand curve shifts to the left. This now becomes our new MSB and MPB, where I know our MPC and our MPB again come together. That's the market, right? Right there, let's call it PM2. I know this is gonna be QM2. Uh, I do know that where MSC and MP, M, sorry, MSC and MSB come together, right there, that is our socially optimal quantity, right? That's our new QS right there. We know that. We know that this, and then as soon as demand decreases, I know that the socially optimal quantity decreases also. The market price and quantity also decreases when there's a demand. 
tricky in that they want us to show that new dead weight loss there. Again, where the market is, is the greatest amount of dead weight loss. And as we produce less and less and less, less and less dead weight loss, easy enough. Uh, I find it tricky. Before there was a demand shift, that was a demand dead weight loss. After this demand shifts, that's our new dead weight loss there. All right. Suppose the government is considering levying a tax on copper. What per unit level tax would achieve the socially optimal quantity? Again, this goes back to that knowing that that vertical distance is your marginal external cost. It is the tax that should be levied to um, reduce this, you know, as we make the price goes up, there's less of this good produced, less people want it, less, um, less people produce it. So I just need to know here that that vertical distance and the way we would describe that is where your marginal social cost minus, minus your marginal personal cost, because we don't really have any numbers or any, we just have to use that vertical distance there and know that your MSC minus your MPC would equal the socially optimal quantity. I hope that makes sense. Uh, explain why a lump sum tax on producers um, will not achieve the socially optimal quantity in the short run. Explain why a lump sum tax on producers will not achieve the socially optimal quantity in the short run. All right, I'm totally drawing a bit of a brain fart here. A per unit tax would shift the marginal cost of firms to the left, which would cause there to be less of this good produced. All right, so... I'm obviously reading something incorrectly here because this doesn't make sense to me. A tax, a per unit tax, would what per unit tax well, would not oh would not achieve. Oh, jeez, if I learned how to read, I'd be okay. Ah, per unit tax here, but lump sum here. I don't know why I was just blowing right over that. Tricky, right? Um, all right, a lump sum tax. The difference here being that a per unit tax, that took me a bit of time to figure that out. A per unit tax is a tax on every amount of good that a producer produces. So it will affect a firm's marginal cost curve. It will shift it. Let's just draw it again. And I'm just going to use a perfectly competitive firm here to show it. Because this is very important. It's asked a lot. Here's my marginal cost curve, right? And there's the quantity that we're producing. Here's our P and our Q. If there's a per unit tax, what we know that your marginal cost curve is your supply curve. You just have to know that. And obviously it helps if you know that. Here is your marginal cost curve. Your MPC is your marginal cost curve. That one is that, they're the same thing. When there's a per unit tax, what it's going to do is it's on this graph, it's going to shift that marginal cost curve, just like supply would shift to the left with a tax. It'll shift it to the left here. And your marginal cost curve would shift to the left. And the quantity that's now produced, where marginal cost and marginal revenue come together, is obviously less. Here, that per unit tax would, in essence, align these two curves and have less being produced. Right? I don't want to say it shifts the marginal personal cost because it doesn't. It shifts the marginal cost curve. Um, it makes it more expensive. Let's don't go into that because it becomes confusing. Recognize, though, that any per unit tax does affect your marginal cost, right? But any lump sum taxes, lump sum taxes are like just because you're in the industry, the government decides to charge everybody who produces copper uh, $5,000, right? 
Here they charge, uh, I don't know, $10 for every pound of copper they produce, right? So the idea that with a per unit tax, for every quantity of copper you produce, you're being taxed at a certain amount. That's going to make you produce less of it. Here, they just tax you for a lump sum tax. Everybody in the industry gets taxed $5,000, whether they produce more or they don't produce any less, doesn't matter. They get the $5,000 tax. So what we understand is that lump sum taxes do not affect your marginal cost curves. Effect or effect, doesn't matter. They do not affect your marginal cost curves. Because they do not do that, they will not change the quantity. If your marginal cost curve does not move, your quantity will not move if that makes sense. Your average total cost curve could shift up or down because lump sum taxes are thought of as a cost, but it would not affect your marginal cost curve, just your fixed, it's a fixed cost. It's tricky, doesn't it? But if we do enough, we should have done enough of these to know clearly, even though if I could read, I would have, it would have hit me in the head much sooner. Per unit taxes always affect marginal cost. Lump sum taxes do not affect marginal cost. Therefore, quantity, does not change with a lump sum. Quantity, obviously, with a tax would decrease and with a, a per unit subsidy would increase. That's tricky. Uh, I hope that helped just a little bit as to explain why a lump sum tax. On, I think all you'd have to say here is that lump sum taxes do not affect marginal cost curves uh, and therefore quantity uh, could not change. All right, my friends, be safe. Bye.